Hello, I'm Greg Jamian and thank you for watching Boomer Health at Home, the show where we explore the most relevant healthcare topics impacting the baby boomer generation today. As more and more baby boomers seek answers to many times difficult healthcare questions, our goal is to provide ideas, tips, and cutting edge solutions that will help improve your everyday life and health. It is our hope that you find the following information helpful as you sit back and watch Boomer Health at Home. Hello, I'm Ryan Donnellan alongside Brett Pulte and you're watching Boomer Health at Home, the show where we aim to help give you advice to keep you safe, happy, and healthy. Brett, what kind of show do we have planned today? Well, today's show we are actually going to be having somewhat of a competition between you and I. Is that right? We have uh, Laura LeBlanc coming in. She's a registered dietitian and she is going to be going over with us a list of different foodborne illnesses. Now the competition between you and I is going to be who can pronounce these words better. Great, well to find out if Hooked on Phonics really worked for us and to learn some on this topic, stay tuned. Thank you. Welcome back to the show and welcome Laura LeBlanc, registered dietitian, uh, here to Hi, talk Ryan. about foodborne illnesses. Thank you for being on the show today. Thank you so much. So Laura, can you give us you know, a little bit of your educational background and you know, how you got into sure. being a dietitian? Um, I've been a registered dietitian for 28 years and I started out um, mainly doing long-term care facilities and rehab. Um, I focused then on um, doing some private consulting um, in various home health arenas and currently work for a home health company, a couple of agencies, and have my own private practice, um, working out of physicians' offices and doing individual counseling. So nutrition has always been a passion for me. Um, I've had relatives with diabetes and things like that, so it led me down this path. Well, it's, it's definitely a good field to be in. So, um, you know, today's topic is foodborne illnesses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the big questions we always run into is what causes an older adult to be more susceptible to foodborne illnesses? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that happens as we age, as we start to develop um, some of us chronic conditions, which can weaken our immune system, um, medications can weaken immune system, um, hygiene issues, uh, you know, um, food preparation. So as you're as you're aging, your body just isn't able to fight off the infections that you may be exposed to. And that's that's very interesting. And you know, on the topic of foodborne illnesses, you know, we all know the common ones: E. coli, Salmonella. But you know, we're we're looking for other ones that we're seeing a lot mm -hmm. of. And there's so, a lot. And and we've compiled a list working with you. So yeah. this is what <laughs> this is something that we want to go over today. I heard about that list. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're kind of going. I think we're going to take almost like an old west style where you have the most wanted list. So we're we're going to have <laughs> unwanted list is what we're putting together right now. If and you've ever had anything on that list, <laughs> you would not want any. No one <laughs> wants so, it. So exactly. We're gonna we're gonna attempt it. They, of course, you know, we're gonna use our idiot sheets to try to get it. But some of these and names the they sound more like characters on Star Trek than anything yeah. I've ever said before. So <laughs> I'm sure you viewers at home are probably going to be laughing at some of the, these pronunciations, but we will try our best. You're probably better at it than I am. Uh, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> so let's start with everyone's favorite, uh, Campylobacter. I think I got it, right? Sounds good to me. <laughs> um, so what is this? How can someone contract it? Where is this most commonly found? Uh, mm -hmm. Can you give us a little more information on it? Sure. Um, Campylobacter. Campylobacter. Yay! <laughs> okay. I like my bird. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of times, it's uh, you will find this in raw food, and we'll we'll see this common theme over and over again that um, things that have not yet been cooked, things that have not been pasteurized, uh, like raw milk, okay. um, those sort of things are going to potentially give you this. Um, foodborne illness. So um, usually you'll have 
pretty severe symptoms. Um, they can come on between two to five days. You can have fever, nausea, um, muscle pain, and sometimes bloody stool. It can be very serious. So um, really anything on this list is. Um, yeah. Yeah. Not good. Not good. <laughs> so now as we go through these, can some of the, there's obviously we're going to see variations in where, you know, where it came from and the symptoms. So what our hope is that as we can trace it back, so if you do get these symptoms, maybe you can look back and see what right. maybe you could have caused it and all that right. stuff. Right. So and, you know, some of them are going to be, um, they're going to be more prevalent than others, especially regional, um, and we're exposed to and we hear about them in the news, but we'll, we'll talk about that too. Um, the one we just mentioned, sometimes from untreated or contaminated water. So it, it really can range where right. you live and what the conditions are. Well, you return, Brett. I'm all for one. I can't yeah. back there, so all you're right. too. <laughs> so now, now I'm going to try. Uh, the next one on our list is cryptosporidium. Yay! There we go. You okay. Did it. We should have started keeping score back yeah. home. That's a <laughs> So. Well, this, the scary thing about this one is that it um, can take up to seven to ten days after becoming infected. So it's sometimes very difficult to determine um, where where you picked up the um, bacteria. And this can be pretty severe. Again, the watery diarrhea, weight loss, stomach cramps. Um, with this one, you may actually see some respiratory issues as well. Oh. So a lot of times people associate it with the flu, especially because it's so far you know, um, from the actual exposure date, it, the symptoms come on. Oh, sure, yeah, you have those symptoms. You might convince yourself, no, it can't be the food, but. Yeah. Uh, now, the scary thing about this is you can actually find it in recreational areas, like swimming pools and, and lakes. What? So, <laughs> remember when you told your kid, don't swallow the water, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. So, the whole don't drink out of the hose and everything, that, mm -hmm. is that part of it? I, I know it's um, you know what? We all survived. We so, all did, right? You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. So let's now let's try to tackle Clostridium yeah. perfringens. Did I do it? Yeah. <laughs> the plants are getting better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they okay. are getting better. Yeah. Um, Clostridium. This can uh, come on pretty um, rapidly, usually within 16 hours or so, and it can last up to 12 to. 24 hours. In the elderly, um, you can be even more susceptible and the symptoms can last, the, the watery diarrhea, the abdominal cramps. And a lot of times this one, um, and it's really something that I looked at, is from food that's been out in a heated environment, like a steam table oh. or a buffet table. And of course, um, undercooked meats and all that. But Sometimes those steam tables, they will not hold an internal temperature that's safe. So that's something that, you know, you could see at banquets or mm -hmm. potlucks or, you mm -hmm. know, just Super my, Bowl Sunday coming right. up. Well, yeah, oh we'll talk about that. <laughs> but um, my, my rule of thumb is if you see a crust over the food that's on the buffet table, you know, or if it's something that's been sitting there a long time. Sometimes, um, you know, just I would avoid So you it. can almost see, if you see a, a visible sign of a crust over that could be no, avoided. No, that's just my own kind of, that's my own personal. <laughs> no, that's just, good. I, I just I, know I because I, these, working so, in kitchens, you know. yeah, I know how long it's been in there for that <laughs> yeah. form. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've always, you know, if you get like a soup or something and there's always that, that skin, you know it's been sitting under the heating lamp too and you think, oh, I'm sure it's fine. But or the pizza at the Speedway. Mm, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So the next one on our list and I'm thinking I got this one right. Listeria monocytogens. That sounds good to me. Hey, there we go. Okay. I'll take Give it. yourself the easy <laughs> ones this way. <laughs> um, listeria, this can come in improperly reheated uh, hot dogs, uh, lunch meats, um, some smoked seafoods and salads that you might be making. Mm. And you can find this, um, a lot of times we'll hear about recalls of fruits and vegetables because yeah. um, raw fruits and vegetables can be contaminated with this as well. Mm. Um, this comes on um, between two to three days after exposure, but this may take, uh, it also can take up to two months 
if with getting other symptoms, more flu-like symptoms. So you can have your GI period where you're having the, the diarrhea and the nausea and vomiting, and then it can carry on to just feeling that malaise and fatigue. So it stays in. Um, it also can be a real problem for very young um, and pregnant, and pregnant um, women because it can actually cause birth defects or um, a miscarriage. Okay, so, mm -hmm. that's one that really stays with you for a while. It does, and that's why it's so important to wash fruits and vegetables. I even do it even if it says washed and you can use yeah. spray it off in the colander. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. I know, that was kind of a downer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Now I know, like, so I'm thinking it's, and this, this is the two times I've tried dieting in my life. <laughs> Every time I try diet, there's a, there's a salad recall, you know, the, the lettuce goes on, but normally that's yeah. an E. coli. Would, would, the, would they do a recall if they find this sort of virus? Oh, absolutely. Well? Okay. Absolutely. So you can yes. kind of, all right, so they're mm -hmm. testing for this. It's, yes. it's still nerve but you never know what happens yeah. between store and consumption. So. Right. Usually yeah. it's a manufacturer um, that may have had the contamination at that site and then they will notify and usually you'll see recalls. You hope you do. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All right, so I should be able to get another point on the board of the thorns. So let's talk noroviruses and other calcoviruses. Okay, well actually norovirus is the leading cause of foodborne illness in our country today. Um, it, it, this is another place where the fresh fruits, um, uh, raw oysters, um, leafy greens, a lot of times you were talking about the salad recall. Yeah. Exactly, because it's, um, it's a fecal oral. So if people aren't washing their hands properly, if, um, you know, and that's mainly one of the ways that you can get it. And it's, um, you usually get on, your stomach will start to hurt within 12 to 24 hours. And then you will have the, sometimes you'll have the vomiting, more so the vomiting and some diarrhea as well. Um, and as I mentioned, it's usually, um, they'll say infected food workers. Um, sometimes, you know, gloves aren't used properly. They aren't taken off. People think it's a magic thing against disease, but if you touch the bacteria and then you don't change your gloves, sure, it's they not might even just like adjust their you know, clothes or, or wipe something. Their nose. And they should change right. the gloves after that, yeah. right? I mean, that's yeah. yeah. So food prep people can yeah. So it, it pretty much sounds like you know one of those the old mantra: if you're sick, stay home. Especially if you work in the food prep industry. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. Please, please stay yeah. home. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so now this one, in my opinion, is a little bit gross, mm -hmm. but the next one on the list is Toxoplasma Gandhi. Okay. Isn't that an interesting name? It's, um, it's a very interesting name, yeah. but it's... Sounds peaceful with Gandhi to me. It does, but wait <laughs> yeah. till Laura explains it. Okay. Well, the, the tox, the toxoplasma viruses, they do put pregnant women at risk, um, and it can cause spontaneous abortion. It can cause, um, yeah, it can also cause um, birth defects, and a lot of times that's why the the female um, or the pregnant woman she will get out of having to change the cat litter, because a, a lot of times that um, organism is associated with cat feces. Um, and so if your cat is using your garden as a litter box, sometimes um, if, you're not, if you're not washing your vegetables or your yeah. fruits really well, that's where that can be picked up. Yeah, that's a different Gandhi altogether. You're right. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, 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 well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so finally, last one. Um, we have a Vibrio vulnificus. Then how'd I do? Volnificus. Volnificus, right? That sounds good. Volnificus? Like a plant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is our Volnificus back here. <laughs> oh, you guys make me laugh. Okay, uh, this is mainly un uh, is associated with undercooked seafood um, or raw. So if, yeah, and I, I don't think if you got uh, undercooked lobster or crab, you'd want to eat it, so Correct. hopefully. Right. But you just, you want to be really careful with, Sushi, you know. though, is that the kind of where this, that's the um, thread with the eating the sushi? You know, I really, I, I don't know if it's, 
it, I guess if it says raw seafood, that's what that's sushi is. So, so stick you get to your sushi, California you roll. Be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, California roll, no. yeah. That's a <laughs> no, just go to a reputable uh, restaurant, and I'm sure you'll be fine. Yeah, and that's, okay. that's a good point, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, we hear all these threats. This is not to discourage anyone from eating ever again. It's, right. This is worst-case scenario, things that can happen. Um, you know, that's uh, we're just kind of looking at that. But So not to knock down any sushi restaurants. Go have sushi. Oh, <laughs> no, not at all. That's, like, that's we, top on my list. Boomer so Health just ruined healthy. the sushi industry. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, so now, you know, we just went over all these foodborne illnesses. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what are some of the best practices to avoid these? Well, we're going to have an upcoming segment where we're ah. going to talk all about what to do to have preventative measures in place so that you're not contracting these um, viruses, bacteria, and also um, we'll talk about you know what to do if you do contract a foodborne illness. Well, that sounds good. Well, I think okay. this gives us a good little list of uh, if you want to after your foodborne illness and you know all that to try to identify maybe where you, it came from. Right. Once you have that idea, or kind of, hey, I, oh yeah, maybe it was that restaurant, or maybe it was that something I bought, if with this uh, evidence, what should someone do? Should they report this? Who would they go to? Well, you know, that's a really good question, because if you suspect you have foodborne il illness, or, you know, definitely get in contact with your physician. But start to, you know, kind of do a, a mental um, countdown to what you last ate. If you still have the package, if you still have the actual food, I would wrap it up and then um, you put don't eat on it or, or you know, bad or something in your refrigerator so no one else eats it. But um, you contact the health department and they will do the actual uh, research behind it and see if there's any other reports of foodborne illness to see if it's an epidemic. Wow, that's, that's good. good great information and unfortunately that's all the time we have today thank you for coming on the show thank today so and much. provide a lot of good information and I think we got a lot of those words correct I'm very proud <laughs> I think I think to, yeah, you beat me by one so that's uh, let's go out for sushi on, on me oh okay good <laughs> great well thank you for watching and the folks at home if you have any questions about any of the content you saw today you can give us a call at area code 248 288-2270 or you can shoot us an email at boomerhealth at americaremedical.com. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.